Men's style. The definitive style blueprint for a better, more handsome you. Here are the 15 rules all men should learn. There are enough rules in life as it is. Some, however, are there to help. Like the rules that govern how to dress well. Of course, every man or woman that has an opinion on such things speaks from personal experience, and no doubt what works for one doesn't always work for another, or what works for one is considered too pedestrian or too avant-garde by another. So, when it comes to dressing, they always have to be taken at face value. They're solid suggestions rather than the last word on style. But good advice is never to be sniffed at, and, as menswear becomes ever more rich and varied, ever more experimental and abundant, ever more trend-aware, in moments of confusion and self-doubt, it can help to have a valuable fall-back position that cuts through the clutter. These rules tend to be founded in history, they've worked for generations, so might well be assumed to work well today too. And they tend to be founded in the obvious, so obvious they're often overlooked, a preference for good fit, high quality, versatility, good value, lack of extremes and keeping it sober. There are certainly many other rules out there than are presented here. Some of these you may have already discovered for yourself. That, after all, is part of the pleasure of clothing, which no rule should hamper, trying new kit out, seeing if it suits you, seeing how it makes you feel. But, these rules have stood the test of time and, when used in conjunction, act as a fail-safe guide on how to dress well today. 1. Wear a suit well The key to a suit looking good is fit. If you're buying off the peg, focus on the fit across the shoulders because getting the chest and waist altered is a relatively easy job according to David Taub, head of bespoke suits at Savile Row Taylor Gives and Hawks. Be cautious about wearing a period suit unless you're pursuing a total period look because in isolation the suit starts to look like a novelty, he adds. Classic is best and most useful, dark, two-button, single-breasted, moderate in details. It's not boring. A suit is a uniform. The idea is to think of this suit as a canvas to build different ideas of individuality around. It's the way you wear it, not the label inside, that impresses. Photo by the Lazy Artist Gallery from Pexels. 2. Invest wisely in a watch. A watch is like a piece of art, argues Don Cochran, managing director of British watch brand Vertex. Choose it because you love it, not because you think it might make money. Watches are personal, it marks your passage through time. But you also have to be practical. Aesthetic, functional, rugged sports models go with anything and can take the hard knocks of everyday wear. Yet, a watch still has to fit you. It should feel comfortable and be right in terms of size and depth relative to your wrist as well 40mm is considered the Goldilocks size. Photo by Marius Mann from Pexels. 3. Don't shy away from color. Whether it's on casual wear or formal wear, indulge in a bit of color. Most men are unjustly scared of it, they're intimidated by anything that isn't navy or gray, says menswear designer Oliver Spencer. But color can be timeless too. A green suit, for example, can look particularly rakish, while Spencer also recommends pinks, greens, mustard and brighter shades of blue as especially versatile year-round shades that will lift your entire outfit. But he adds that, when it comes to color, less is still more, you just need a bit of it, in one garment. 4. Wear in your jeans until they are yours. The all-time most useful cut of the world's most popular garment, according to Alex Meir, co-owner of Sheffield-based label Forge Denim, is slim tapered. It's wider in the thigh, so it's comfortable, but narrows, so it works with either smart shoes or sneakers, he advises. It's the best year-round, wear with anything, dress up or down style. The wise will wear dark, raw denim too and give the pre-distressed a wide berth. The whole pleasure of denim is that it ages with the way you wear it. Why miss out on that? Photo by Tony Huckinen on Unsplash. 5. Look after your appearance. It's the kind of advice your mother might offer, but if you've invested money and thought in your clothing, look after it. Use wooden hangers for shirts and shoe trees for your best shoes, have your suit dry cleaned and pressed, wash your clothes regularly and, ideally, don't tumble dry them, it can degrade the fabric, and polish your shoes. Equally, it's not just the skin of your leather jacket that you need to care for, the same goes for the one you wear every day. Establish a simple, but no less solid, grooming regime, brush your hair and cut your nails. After all, the devil resides in the details. 6. Keep your underwear simple. Style isn't only what everyone else can see. 
When it comes to men's underwear, there are two rules to follow. 1. Novelty prints are not for grown men, your underwear is not the place to express your personality, as shirt and underwear maker Emma Willis notes. And 2. Heavily branded underwear lacks sophistication. Of all places where you might have the confidence not to have branding, your underwear should be it, adds Willis. The style that has best stood the test of time, of course, is the cotton boxer short, likely because, as is the case with linen, they take repeated washing, breathe well and are comfortable against your skin. 7. Spend money on shoes. Timelessness is about simple design and all the more so with shoes, argues Tim Little, owner of heritage shoe brand Grenson. The color, the pattern, the sole, you don't want it fussy. Anything fussy may look good now but will look strange very quickly. Quality shoes, the gold standard being resolable Goodyear welted examples, are the kind of investment that should last 15 years or more. Opt for classic styles such as brogues, loafers, or a plain, dark, five eyelet derby on a round toe last. It's the shape of the toe that really counts, and round never goes out of fashion, says Little. It's pointy toes or square toes that look obviously impractical. Nobody has feet shaped like that. 8. Keep accessorizing to a minimum. Accessories like ties and pocket squares bring individuality to classic clothing, but be careful how you use them. It's best to harmonize them with what you're wearing by picking out a color or two. Or even to juxtapose them entirely, says Michael Hill, creative director of men's accessories brand Drake's. What you don't want is to match them up. When it comes to curating shirt and tie combinations, wear your tie or pocket square in a darker shade than your jacket. And don't overdo the accessories either, if in doubt, think less is more and take one element away. You're aiming for an air of nonchalance, adds Hill. You just need one point of interest. Photo by Dane Diener on Unsplash. 9. Know thyself. There's a few things less stylish than a man dressed as he thinks he should dress rather than in what he genuinely feels suits who he is. There are caveats to that, of course, there are no prizes for dressing like a rodeo clown unless indeed you are one. But whatever you're wearing, you have to own it. Genuine style icons are those who go their own way with a self-confidence that comes from their clothes being a second skin, not a costume. 10. Dress for the setting. Style is not merely about self-expression, it's also about being dressed appropriately for your environment. Think of clothes as being codes, you need the right combination to work with the setting you're in, and that's whether it's a formal dinner or a lazy Sunday in the pub. The worst style is one which is out of place. Is this a kind of conformity? No, as one of Tom Ford's off-trotted out fashion quotes explains, it's a mark of respect for others. And about feeling comfortable in yourself. When in doubt, overdress. 11. Don't skimp on glasses. Invest time into finding the right spectacles for you. People spend an average of seven minutes picking a pair that will define them for the next three or more years, notes eyewear designer Tom Davies. Poor choice and poor fit are why so many people learn to hate their glasses. Buy what you feel good in, taking into account your face shape but considering the top line of the frame's relation to your eyebrow shape, team straight with straight, curved with curved, and your hairstyle. Buy wisely too, says Davies, there's no point buying cheap frames and being upsold on expensive lenses because the frames will look tatty soon enough anyway. Photo by Gregory Hayes on Unsplash. 12. Choose versatile outerwear. The temptation may be to wear a classic style, but modern technical fabrics in darker shades and easy cuts are making coats what they should be, lightweight and breathable but also properly protective. Changes in seasonality, the climate and buying habits are making heavy wool coats seem out of keeping now, suggests Adam Cameron, owner of outerwear specialist The Workers' Club. Think of a coat instead as being your final layer, one you can wear as much or as little under as required. A field or bomber jacket jacket is a good all-rounder but if you need to dress up, go for a short Mac. 13. Buy a dinner suit, never hire. Occasions for the height of formal dressing may be rare, but they're all the more exacting for that. So, while it feels like an extravagance, owning a dinner suit that fits you rather than hiring one makes more sense after years of use. With hiring, there's always the risk of the wearer looking almost childlike while dressed in some oversized, boxy ensemble, warns Toby Lamb, design director of contemporary tailoring label Richard James. 
own as classic a dinner suit as possible, in midnight blue, single-breasted, with satin lapels and trousers seams. And it goes without saying you should learn how to tie a bow tie yourself. Photo by OSPAN Ali on Unsplash. 14. With shirts, stick to the classics. It sounds silly, says James Cook, head of bespoke shirtmaking for Turnbull and Asa, but any men's shirt can be made to look expensive if it's well pressed. All the same, Cook is particular about the details. Strike a middle line, he recommends, avoid bold styles unless you think you can carry it off, and, for a collar that works with or without a tie, and that always sits properly under a jacket, opt for a semi-cutaway. 15. Know when to break the rules. Know when to adhere to dress codes such as black tie and know when to break them. Some are there for a good reason, typically because the occasion demands it or some higher authority, your boss, perhaps, expects it. But, likewise, as Drake's Hill notes, we can get too hung up about rules as well, and there's always a case for ripping them up. That, after all, is how style advances, little by little. Enjoy the freedom there is now to make mistakes. Cold feet are a fact of winter, as reliable as dark mornings and drunken Decembers. The shoes you wear the rest of the year round, perforated trainers that let the chill in and low-rise shoes that let the rain in, don't cut it in the worst of the weather. You need some winter boots and not just one pair, preferably two or three. This is footwear originally designed for timber yards, hiking trails and the trenches of war, so you can be confident it will get you through a slightly frosty commute. In style, too, because the best winter boots are as good looking as they are practical. Fashion has a thing for technical clothing of all kinds right now, hiking style and workwear are trends that won't quit, but it's always been happy to appropriate boots, from soldiers, mountaineers, riders and blue-collar workers. Those boots have the attributes all boots should have, durability, practicality, comfort and weatherproofing. And despite those chunky soles and unforgiving leathers, winter boots are some of the most versatile shoes you can buy. Invest in the right pair and they'll last decades if you look after them as much as they do you. So, best foot forward. Find the style that suits you best below, along with the go-to ways of wearing them. What to look for in winter boots. Quality materials. Good winter boots shouldn't be dirt cheap if you want them to last, and you should. The quickest way to spot quality in a boot is by the quality of the upper material, says Tim Little, creative director and CEO of Grenson. A well-made boot will always be made of quality leather because no one would go to the effort of making a great boot in cheap leather. Quality leather always has soft creases and usually is hand-polished so you can see the patina and dark and light patches. It isn't always uniform. Alternatively, look for tanned leather, which tends to be thicker than painted leather and shouldn't need as much weatherproofing. Goodyear welted soles. A solid footing in the winter means a pair of boots that feature the famous Goodyear welting technique to stitch the sole firmly to the upper via a rib-like strip of leather or canvas. The stitching of the welt can be seen above the welt and the sole stitched through the welt underneath the sole, says James Fox, brand director for Crockett and Jones. Be careful though. If you cannot see the continuation of this stitch through the sole you could be looking at a pair of cheaper, cemented boots using an imitation welt. Intel. A well-made boots brand has detailed information about how they make boots, where they are made and what materials they use, says Rick Van Dyke from Red Wing. A good boot maker is proud of this information. And if you are looking for a winter boot with the perfect fit and quality? Go to the store of the boot maker or a speciality store. There you get all the information and fit you need to get the perfect boots for your feet. Practicality. Recognizing that most of us only wear our boots to either the office or the pub, shoemakers have, in recent years, fitted their designs with comfortable and practical soles. Combat-style treads will make you even more sure-footed while contrast white rubber soles offer some smart casual hybrid styling. Likewise, shoemakers, even the likes of Dr. Martens, have made efforts to offer lighter versions of their chunkiest and most iconic styles with new materials offering the same wear and practicality. Red Wing. The best winter boots styles. Hiking boots. Have you been spending your weekends training for a forthcoming trip up Kilimanjaro? If the answer's no, then you can be forgiven for overlooking the humble hiking boot as a viable footwear option. But only just. 
Regardless of your outdoorsy aspirations or lack thereof, hardy hiking boots have established themselves as foul weather footwear essentials over the past few years, especially among sharp men who prize a shoe's ability to face down all manner of meteorological nasties in style. We're not experts in adventure sports, so we'll leave recommending boots for seriously tough terrain to the professionals. What we can do, though, is suggest designs that are ideal for navigating city streets, heavy dog walking sessions and the occasional trip to a countryside pub. You need a pair that offers untold levels of comfort, ankle support and other orthopedic box ticking features such as full leather linings and cushioned footbeds. Although you could sack that off and get a beautiful but hardly practical suede pair from a high fashion designer that hasn't seen a mountain in their lives. Team them with other tough as old boots menswear staples like raw denim, corduroy, twill or flannel shirts and cable knit jumpers. You could also pair them with rain stoppers and fleece to lean fully into the outdoors trend. Or be bold and use them as a striking counterpoint to tailoring, just not for your next job interview. Brogue boots. If you're not ready to go full Bear grills with a pair of hiking boots, there are other, subtler ways to infuse your winter look with some outdoorsy influences. A sartorial hybrid, the Brogue boot comes with the same reassuring weight and solid construction of hiking boots, but with all the wing-tipped, country manner smartness of brogues. As a general rule of thumb, you can wear your Brogue boots with any outfit you might normally wear with traditional brogues, so lace up a dark brown or black leather pair with heavier wool suiting, and smart trouser and shirt, cardigan combinations. However, owing to their winter readiness, brogue boots also play well with pieces that straddle the rugged refined divide, such as heavy gauge knitwear, gilets, waxed and quilted jackets, as well as heritage fabrics such as corduroy and tweed. While sock flashing isn't necessarily frowned upon when wearing a pair of these, it's not an entirely natural fit with the brogue boots finesse either. Stick instead with trousers with a neat break i.e. that finish around the top set of lace eyelets, or roll more casual trousers and jeans up to the same point for a smart finish. Look out for rubberized soles for some extra winter practicality. Work boots. Some of the best boots ever made were first designed decades ago for people to wear in factories and shipping yards. The steel toe caps may not have survived the fashion crossover, but many other features have waterproof materials, padded ankles, high grip soles and cozy linings. Why wouldn't you want those things for your feet when it's freezing outside? The most iconic work boots, the Timberland Yellow Boot, Red Wings Classic MOC Toe, have remained almost unchanged for decades, which makes it surprising that they've been adopted by such diverse style tribes. Hip-hop artists, lumbersexuals and workwear enthusiasts all love a work boot. That means you can pair them with a range of casual, always casual outfits, from joggers to jeans, trucker jackets to parkas. Look for dyed leather or waterproof nubuck and sealed seams to keep the puddles at bay. Combat style boots. Like most items in a man's wardrobe, boots have a proud history of military service. From high lace-ups designed to keep out trench foot to modern tactical designs, combat boots have recorded a number of victories on the fashion front. Right now, they've not just won the battles, they've won the war corps. The directional trend for combat trousers, holsters and all things military means there's rarely been a better time to buy this style. Not that you have to leave the house looking like a character from Call of Duty. Look at Ryan Gosling's character in Blade Runner 2049. He paired tactical boots you can buy on Amazon with a statement overcoat. Or designer Charlie Casely Hayford who wears his trademark high boots with classic tailoring. Streetwear fans might pair them with jeans and a bomber. Or an easy middle ground is heritage wear, wool, twill cotton, generous fits and plenty of herringbone. Chelsea boots. The Swiss Army knife of your shoe rack, the Chelsea is by far the most versatile boot you can buy, the right pair looks just as good worn with a suit or tailored trousers Monday to Friday as it does a leather jacket and shredded skinny jeans for a gig at the weekend. While suede Chelsea boots have something undeniably louche about them, it's a delicate material that is hard to keep pristine in or just after a downpour. If you can't be bothered with regular cleaning, brushing and applications of protector spray all winter, opt for easy wipe leather instead. As it happens, a pair in smooth black leather is much closer to the iconic original anyway. Details to look out for include autumn-ready rubber soles and the classic heel pull, a practical feature that many modern iterations don't have but should. Also, mind your toes. 
pointed toe Chelsea boots, when worn with a suit at least, look a little off, so keep your sights firmly set on round-toed styles instead. Ankle boots. As far as we're concerned, there are few instances in which wearing a pair of desert or chukka boots isn't a good idea. While their mid-weight construction marks them out as a clear choice for spring and summer, they're actually a killer option for the winter months, too, along with other ankle-tickling styles like jodhpur boots and low-rise hikers. This in-between profile makes most ankle boots smart enough to style with a roll neck, blazer and smart wool trousers, but also not so fussy that they can't be coupled with chinos and a crew neck sweatshirt. Perfect for navigating the winter months dress codes quandaries. Leather pairs are a no-brainer for the cold and wet, offering resilience and an enduring elegance, while suede pairs can also work if you take the time to regularly treat them with a protector spray and always check the forecast before you leave the house. Treat this style, chukka or desert boots especially, as a smarter, more hard-wearing alternative to trainers. Team them with chinos, button-down shirts and crew-neck jumpers to create sharp, warm get-ups that will pass the pub safe test no problem. Thank you for watching.